In an age where humans can create materials from data, harvest energy from the wind, and even generate life inside laboratories, there are still silkworms quietly weaving miracles in their own way. Across the still plains of China, a bio-industry is emerging, one where every process is governed by scientific precision and industrial discipline. Each cocoon, small enough to fit in a hand, contains an immense chain of value, from fashion to medicine, from traditional materials to advanced biotechnology. No longer a symbol of the past, silk is redefining the very fabric of the 21st century, a place where nature and technology become one. Could it be that the secret weapon of the future is being spun by this tiny creature? Join us on this fascinating journey with Mandarin Tech. While the synthetic fabric industry continues to release over 500,000 tons of plastic microfibers each year, seeping into oceans and poisoning the world's water sources, China is witnessing the powerful revival of a 5,000-year-old Silk Road tradition. Every year, the country produces more than 60,000 tons of raw silk, accounting for nearly 70% of global output, generating over 5 billion USD in export revenue and providing jobs for millions of rural workers. The silk threads spun from the most common silkworm species, Bombex mori, are as light as air, yet several times stronger than steel by weight. And unlike synthetic fibers, they naturally decompose without leaving behind microplastics. These threads don't just weave fabric, they weave a nation's economic and cultural identity. From high-tech factories to the runways of Hermes and Dior, China is transforming this ancient fiber into a new symbol of the biomaterial revolution in the high-tech era. The transformation of China's silk industry begins in Sichuan, where modern silkworm farms operate like self-contained industrial ecosystems. Spanning more than 20,000 square meters, each facility is built with insulated roofing and an integrated microclimate control system that maintains a stable environment year-round. Inside, rows of multi-level rearing houses are arranged in parallel. Each room maintains an ideal temperature of 25-27 degrees and humidity around 80% continuously regulated by digital sensors connected to a central data system. Every square meter is optimized to house 1,500 to 2,000 silkworms that grow in perfect synchronization within a pristine space where every factor, from airflow and lighting to air purity, is precisely calculated. Automated ventilation fans, sterilizing floors, and real-time monitoring systems operate non-stop, turning each farm into a large-scale biological laboratory where technology and life move together in absolute precision. In this closed production chain, the nutrition provided to silkworms is strictly controlled. Their only food is mulberry leaves, harvested from specialized farms located right next to the rearing facilities to ensure the highest nutritional value. Every morning, mechanical harvesters or farmers carefully select the middle and lower sections of the branches, where protein and chlorophyll levels are at their peak. Immediately after cutting, the leaves are brought to the processing area, where they are sorted and gently air-dried with cool, natural airflow, because silkworms never drink water throughout their entire life cycle. They absorb moisture only through the leaves. Even a thin layer of dew can cause bloating or widespread disease among the larvae. Each mulberry leaf is treated as a standardized nutritional unit, a biological foundation that allows billions of silkworms to spin the purest silk threads on Earth. Once completely dried, the freshly harvested mulberry leaves are quickly transported to the rearing area, where millions of silkworms enter their crucial growth stage. Inside climate-controlled rooms, thousands of stacked trays are neatly arranged, each containing hundreds of larvae at the same developmental phase. The leaves are cut into different sizes depending on the silkworm's age, 
Young larvae eat only soft leaves chopped into tiny 0.5 centimeter pieces, while mature silkworms need thicker strips about 3 to 4 cm long to stimulate silk production. On average, a single silkworm consumes an amount of mulberry equal to 25,000 times its body weight over its roughly 25-day lifespan. They are fed four to five times a day at fixed intervals to synchronize metabolism and growth. After each feeding, the automated microclimate system lowers the humidity to 70% to prevent mold, then raises it back to 80% during digestion. Under the soft, diffused light, the only sound that remains is the gentle rustling of leaves, a delicate rhythmic breath of nature itself. As the soft rustle of leaves fades into the air, the entire rearing hall seems to shift into a slower, quieter rhythm, one filled with anticipation. Under the gentle, diffused light, the silkworm's bodies turn translucent white, as delicate as mist resting on newborn silk. Silence takes over, broken only by the faint warmth and subtle movement of millions preparing to spin their cocoons. The automated system lowers the temperature to 24 degrees and stabilizes humidity at 75%, creating ideal conditions for silk glands to work at full capacity. On multi-layered bamboo or plastic racks, each silkworm secures itself and begins moving its head in a graceful figure eight motion. The liquid protein it secretes solidifies instantly into a 10 micron thread that can stretch up to 1 to 200 meters. Over the next 48 to 72 hours, synchronized movements weave a sea of white cocoons, each weighing just 2 to 3 grams, as if life itself were being rewritten in the silent language of silk. While the Bombix Mori farms in southern China are covered in millions of shimmering white cocoons, the northern Tusa farms quietly continue a different chapter of the silk industry. Known as the symbol of wild silk, Tusa produces golden threads that are two to three times stronger than domestic silk. Unlike enclosed farms, Tusa facilities are semi-open, blending natural light with automated climate systems to recreate the conditions of their forest habitat. Moths preserved from the previous season are kept in climate-controlled cages at 26 degraxen and 70% humidity to maintain peak vitality and fertility. When released onto hanging racks, they fly freely and mate naturally. After three to five days, farmers gently shake the frames with bamboo sticks to disperse pollen and increase fertilization rates. The larvae are then raised separately and fed oak, elm, or wild apple leaves, rich in tannins that give Tusa silk its golden hue and exceptional strength. With a 50-60 day growth cycle, Nearly twice that of domestic silkworms, Tusa are allowed to complete their metamorphosis rather than being harvested early, preserving genetic diversity and long-term sustainability. Thanks to its dense fibers, natural luster, and wild origin, Tusa silk is revered as the silk of the forest, a prized material for luxury craftsmanship and art. When the ivory-white hue covers the rearing racks, the entire farm seems to shift into a different rhythm, silent, yet filled with urgency. About 72 hours after the silkworm stops spinning, farmers begin the first harvest. Each frame is carefully checked to ensure cocoon moisture is below 12% and hardness reaches 0.3 to 0.4 N before removal. In the past, every cocoon had to be delicately separated by hand taking up to eight hours for just 10,000 cocoons. But today, that labor has been replaced by compact mechanical systems. A 300 kilo hydraulic hoist lifts and lowers the spinning racks onto conveyor belts moving at 10 meter per minute, where semi-automatic cocoon separators work non-stop. Using 80 Hertz vibration and precise air pressure, the system separates tens of thousands of cocoons within minutes without damaging the fragile 10 micron silk fibers. As a result, harvesting efficiency increases tenfold while waste drops below 2%. The hum of machinery blends with the faint rustle of dry cocoons, 
the mechanical heartbeat of a modern silk harvest. After leaving the farm, the trays of cocoons are taken to the manual sorting area, a place where every movement demands sharp eyes and years of experience. On long bamboo tables covered with fine mesh, layers of cocoons are spread thin and carefully inspected under natural light to evaluate their uniformity, luster, and shell thickness. Only those that are perfectly rounded, smooth on the surface, and have shells between 0.4 and 0.6 millimeters thick are selected for the high-grade silk production line, where the purity of each thread must reach near-perfect precision. Immediately after sorting, the qualified cocoons are sent to the heat treatment area, a crucial stage that determines the integrity of the silk fibers. To prevent the larvae inside from maturing into moths and damaging the cocoon structure, workers halt their life cycle using one of three methods, steam heating, hot air drying, or immersion in water at 85-95 Thanosixen. Each batch is gently stirred to ensure even heat distribution without deforming the outer silk layer. The heat not only stops metamorphosis, but also sterilizes and stabilizes the silk protein, keeping the inner fibers soft, strong, and long-lasting. From the heat treatment area, the dried cocoons are transferred directly to a row of warm, hot water basins, releasing gentle steam. Here, the Saracen layer coating the silk fibers begins to awaken in water maintained between 65 and 90 degrees Kaisu. A light stirring system keeps each cocoon fully submerged, allowing the shell to gradually soften and take on a glossy, misty sheen. When touched, the surface is no longer brittle but slightly elastic, a clear sign that the inner fibers are ready for the most delicate stage of the process. The factory atmosphere now moves in harmony with the rhythm of steam and metal. The gentle simmer of water blends with the steady hum of spinning reels, creating a mechanical symphony for one of the most delicate stages of silk production. In basins maintained at 90 degrees on low, slow rotating circular brushes remove the remaining Saracen layer while searching for the silk's loose end, a thread only 10 microns thick, almost invisible to the eye. Once the end is found, Workers quickly guide it into the reeling machine, where synchronized drives pull the strands in perfect rhythm. Threads from five to 10 cocoons are combined, evenly stretched, and wound onto spools at a speed of 300 meters per minute, each rotation catching the light with a silvery shimmer. The fine silk flows through the rollers like liquid metal born from the breath of the cocoons themselves. On average, one cocoon yields about 1,000 meters of thread, and roughly 3,000 cocoons are needed to produce half a kilogram of raw silk, the foundation of the world's most exquisite fabrics. To become flawless silk, the shimmering threads pass through spinning machines, where each fine strand is twisted by spindles rotating at 6,000, 8,000 revolutions per minute. In the quiet space, the hum of rollers and soft hiss of steam fill the air as clusters of delicate filaments intertwine, forming a uniform, durable structure that still retains silk's natural softness. At this stage, artisans may blend fibers from different cocoons to create variations in thickness, sheen, or distinctive patterns. The artistry lies in the twist ratio, Wool or alpaca requires a tight spin to prevent breakage, but silk, with its long, smooth fibers, needs only a gentle twist, just enough to unify the strands while preserving the graceful drape and signature luster that makes silk one of the most elegant materials ever woven. When the spinning reels come to a stop, the silk's journey of refinement continues. The shimmering bundles move to the degumming area, where water, heat, and chemistry blend in a delicate purification ritual. In basins kept at 60, 70 degrees, a mild alkaline solution slowly dissolves the outer Saracen layer. Beneath the soft mist, 
The threads reveal a luminous, glassy core that feels almost weightless and smooth to the touch. Freed from its coating, the silk awakens, transformed from a raw fiber into a living, pure, and radiant material. To add color to Silk's journey, the threads are taken to the dyeing section, where steam, pigments, and herbal scents blend in a warm atmosphere. In deep baths maintained at 80-90 degsoxylin, natural dyes extracted from indigo leaves, pomegranate peels, rosewood, or madder roots slowly seep into every fiber, spreading like wisps of smoke. The silky bundles soak for four to six hours, gently stirred to let the color reach the core, creating a clear tone and lasting vibrancy. In traditional workshops, this ancient dyeing craft remains the soul of ikat and brocade patterns, where every shade is born from the earth and human touch. After absorbing the natural dyes, the shimmering silk threads move to the weaving area, the final stage of their long transformation. Inside a space glowing with reflected light, the looms begin to move, their rhythmic clatter echoing like the heartbeat of the factory. Steam, metal, and the soft gleam of silk merge into an atmosphere that feels both alive and meditative, a meeting point of art and engineering. Depending on purpose and tradition, the silk may be woven on handcrafted bamboo looms, where artisans guide each warp and weft with remarkable precision, or on industrial machines operating with millimeter accuracy. Every gentle pass of the shuttle is a pulse of creativity and patience, turning fragile threads into flowing forms. In modern workshops, thousands of fibers move in perfect harmony under digital control, interlacing and shimmering under the light. Each strand becomes part of a larger pattern, fluid yet precise, soft yet strong. Here, silk is not only woven into fabric, but into a story of resilience and artistry where human skill and mechanical rhythm unite to give birth to something timeless, breathing life and elegance into the world of textiles. Behind the shimmering glow of silk lies a story of patience, ingenuity, and humanity's desire to master nature. From a tiny creature, humans have created a material that carries the soul of time, soft yet incredibly strong. In the age of technology, silk is not just a legacy, but a reminder that true beauty is always woven from delicacy and respect for nature. What do you think? Will this thousand-year-old thread continue to guide the future of materials? Share your thoughts, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss the next story.